Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show where we are talking budget. At least what we want to see in the upcoming budget on Monday. And one of the biggest allocations and areas of focus on the budget was agriculture. So naturally we're going to continue the conversation speaking with the president of the Agricultural Society, Mr. Dal Rampasad, along with the winner of the Youth Award for Agriculture, Laquan Josiah Pear. Gentlemen, good morning and good welcome to the Now. Good morning, good morning to you as well. I want to point out that this is a full gan grandy gang right now, so this is very, very, <laughs> very, very great to me. But for persons who are in the field, it was particularly inspiring to see a young person at the forefront doing such diverse and, and, and a wide variety of things in the field of agriculture, kind of reinforcing the government's emphasis on both youth and agriculture sector. So I'll start with you, Laquan. First of all, congratulating you on your Thank award. Thank you very much. And asking you to give me, in three words, what it felt like to be recognized for your endeavors in agriculture on a national scale? Three words, inspiring, encouraging, and supportive. Mm, so it sounds like this is just the start of things. Yeah. Although you have been in many endeavors, even to the point of being able to be consulting. So tell me a little bit as to why you were awarded that award. What were some of the areas of your focus? Actually, so I currently do agriculture in a diverse field, as you said. So one of the focus is educating and empowering and the awareness of the importance of agriculture and young persons getting involved in agriculture and how they can play a significant role in attaining food security in the near future for a growing population. And I think by encouraging young people like myself, I'm going to the communities and secondary schools, primary schools, even preschools, I think that was such an impactful thing because at a young age, I have never experienced a farmer or someone in agriculture coming to a career day and encouraging me mm. about agriculture. Right. So you, you were the change you wanted to see then, Jerry. Definitely. <laughs> leading the charge, leading the charge. And in terms of representing persons like Laquan, Daryl, you'll be able to give us some insights as to why those things are important as the president of the Agricultural Society. We were making the distinction that this is the only entity under Parliament that actually considers the or protects the... As an advocate, buddy, yeah advocates for farmers specifically. So tell me a little bit as to, well, the 2024 allocations and provisions, encouragement of the youth, and how that impacted the Farmers Association, or rather, Agricultural Society, from your perspective. Well, you see, that is rather commendable, that we are now encouraging youths into agriculture, because taking into consideration that the, we have a huge age limit, not limit, sorry, the number of farmers that we have in existence, are over 50, mm. right? So taking into consideration that we now have something that excites the youths into agriculture and now promotes agriculture from that end as something that looks profitable and as a business, also looking at technology as well. Because what we think about, especially for the youths in agriculture, the first thing that comes to mind is hard labor. <laughs> but now that we see that they are introducing and teaching you know, the different aspects in terms of new technology in agriculture, that is something that is commendable. Because in the past, what you would see is that your existing farmers, very rare an existing farmer, would encourage their children to go into agriculture, mm. very rare. You would hear most farmers say, I don't want my children in this field. With the hard work, you With the hard work and easier. you know the yeah. different challenges that they face in agriculture at the same time. And now growing up in technology, most persons, they would say, these youths, they're born with a cellular phone, <laughs> right? They're accustomed to technology and all these things. So what we are seeing happening is now fostering that relationship and binding technology and agriculture, because this is where we need to head mm -hmm. and look into protective agricultural systems as well. If we want to boost agricultural production and move away from the risk in agriculture, we need to start looking more as to how we get into protected mm -hmm. agricultural systems. I like well. that you're giving me some insight <clears> as to what you want to see for sure. But I still want to backtrack a little bit because when we talk about allocate when we talk about budget, we will talk figures, we will talk allocations. And Generally, I expect that most industries will want more funds allocated towards the industries. But would the farmers say that they've seen the benefits of what was allocated for the year 2024? Have we seen significant progress? Well, well, you see, what we need to take into consideration that there's a difference between allocation and releases. Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people, a lot of persons miss that point. So we could hear, okay, there's $400 million allocated for agriculture. 
What we need to hear is how much of that was actually utilized for the agricultural sector. And I'll give you an example. What we would like to see in the near future is that more funds is made available towards the agricultural incentive program and the timeline in which the farmers can access the agricultural incentive program in order to boost production at the same time. So there's, a, there's quite a difference in terms of allocation and release at the same time too. Understood. We actually just saw that this morning in terms of measurement, how we actually measure the success of the usage, if you will. But if you're talking specifically in terms of allocations for, you said, is it the Agricultural incentive programs. Incentive programs. <coughs> the ministry would have had allocated uh, an additional $4 million in terms of incentive to farmers last year. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about not necessarily being able to access that or an increase in that same we figure. We want to see an increase in that, in that figure. And right. it was also commendable that this year several persons were able to access the grant facility mm -hmm. as it pertains for expansion and development in agriculture. And that grant facility is up to $100,000. Mm -hmm if you are interested in expanding your agricultural business. And quite a few farmers were able to access that aspect of the program. But as it pertains to the, the agricultural incentive program and the daily inputs and whatnot, we need to see some improvements in the timeline there. So in that <coughs> particular allocation, the 400 million was split with 200, sorry, $250 million for incentives to farmers and 100 million in terms of infrastructure. Would you say you'd prefer to see perhaps a flip or change to how it's allocated more being towards the persons still and probably less towards infrastructure? Well, actually, what I would say is that I have, I agree with the allocation. Mm -hmm. the, I would like to see it in proper usage, mm. right? This year, we saw that the government took a very proactive approach in terms of the, the infrastructure as it pertains to drainage in some of the agricultural areas, right? So we saw that we had less flooding as opposed to, to last year. So that is commendable that we had a very proactive approach in terms of infrastructure. However, we need to think about some of the issues that we face as it pertains to um, climate change. So what we might like to see next year is, you know, projects that deal with climate change and as it pertains to making water available and also removing the same water at the same time when we have excessive rainfall, mm. right? So we like to see, for example, projects in, in pond construction, reconstruction, pond desilting, channel desilting, and all these things that would lend support to, the, to making water available for the farming community. Right, a big <coughs> challenge there. Look, and I know you can speak to challenges having been in the field and perhaps even some solutions with that innovation that I was alluding to with technology. Tell me a little bit about, in terms of experience, the areas that you'd like to see focus on as well. Definitely young persons and also a special focus on single mothers. Um, I think that one of the challenges that we will hear, and we could hear this decades now, is the land tenure and the access to land. And as a young graduate, if you think about it, if I just graduated from university with a bachelor's in agriculture, one of the first routes is either seeking employment in the Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. or trying to gain some level of capital. So to mitigate that issue, I think that there should be an agro-incentive business grant, startup grant. This will encourage young people who may want to venture into the agro-processing field, provided that there is no crop production access land available. Mm -hmm. But yet still, I have to acknowledge the YAP program, which is the providing two acres of land, the $20,000 grant, and mm -hmm. the homestead for young people. Right. So I see that there are ways they are trying to mitigate that issue. But what about these young people who are not beneficiaries of the YAP program, the agriculture program, and the Sheet House program? How are we going to reach these young people to get more involved in agriculture? So I think having a startup grant, of course, this startup grant will be program and it will encourage people with sustainable development, right. business development, uh, management of funds, even the um, single mothers. So if they could get involved in the agro processing by simple of the agro business startup grant, I think it will reach a long way. And most of the times, young people, if you approach the agriculture development bank, you must have some level of collateral. So at least this startup grant will be that collateral for these young people to expand. And an absolute strategy towards it is what I'm hearing, basically. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of acknowledging those programs like YAP and the others that have been focusing on the youth uh, that we don't fall into denial, what about legislative uh, support? Do we see or do we have any sort of aspirations towards legalities where uh, uh, agriculture is concerned? Perennial Asni has been a conversation we've been hearing for decades. 
decades, mm -hmm. and there was particular focus, so mention of it in last budget. How much of that have we seen? How much more do we need? And mm -hmm. with the last uh, sort of uh, legislative support we saw in something like 2020, 2002 or something like that, are we going towards or gearing towards perhaps some legislature as well to reinforce the support that is necessary for the farming and agricultural society? Well, as a matter of fact, and you spoke about Pridia Lassen, which continues to be one of the issues affecting the farmers of Trinidad and Tobago. And we did see an expansion in the Pridia Lassen squad, right? Mm -hmm. As much as 70 members being added to the Pridia Lassen squad and a fleet of new vehicles and all of that to add to their performance as their tools and all of this. What we need to look in is the coverage as well, right? And the Pridia Lassen squad also needs to have collaborations with the TTPS as well. And I would even go as far to say other military services as well, because coverage is very important. And you spoke about legislative change. And I believe that we also need to increase the penalty as it pertains to Prida Larceny. Because I can't tell you when last I heard somebody serving a 5 to 10 for, for Prida Larceny. And this is one of the things that we need to look into, because the, these persons are aware that the, the penalties are, are minimal mm -hmm. as it pertains to Prida Larceny. So, what they're going to do, they're going to lock me up, they're going to keep me a couple of weeks, they're going to let me go. And we need to look into something as that change, change in some of the and call for, you know, higher penalties as it pertains to predial larceny, right, as a deterrent for these individuals that are involved. Because predial larceny has now escalated to what we could now look at um, as in terms of planned crime or organized crime, mm -hmm. right? It has reached a stage where we have some farmers who are fearful for their lives because they had home invasions. We had farmers losing their lives this year, as a matter of fact, through, through those issues as well, too. And these are things that we need to look into as it pertains to penalties, as it pertains to predial larceny as well. I appreciate that. Because ultimately, <coughs> these conversations we're having now may change when the actual, release, uh, the actual budget is released, so that we are aspirational, if you will, and hopefully opening the doors for consultation and conversation. And I'm going to come back to Laquan's point of specifically looking at single mothers. Are there particular groups beyond the youth that you guys think we should be looking at and perhaps allocating more resources towards in this upcoming budget? So I'll start with you, Laquan. Well, to be quite honest with you, I am not aware of a specialized grouping for single mothers where they benefit from agro. Um, or agriculture or any agro incentives. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see that happening. And beyond the single mothers, what about, and it's, it's, it's simple because just last night, um, a young man in my community, he's mentally ill. He approached me, he said, listen, I know plumbing, I went to MIC. Um, I know electrical. What about these young persons who are mentally ill and have um, been on medication and have been in a process of rehabilitation, how can we add them to the value Inclusion. of agriculture? Mm. So I think it's something that is overlooked as well too. What I challenge them to do, I said, instead of, you know, um, trying to get a work, I want you to build a tool for me as a farmer that can minimize my labor intents. And um, you say, if you know plumbing, I say, listen, I want you to make a tool where I can put my fertilizer in. I don't need to bend down and fertilize <laughs> my plants. So I think beyond these single mothers, also young people who are victims of mental illness. Gotcha. Daryl, any specific focus groups that you think we were missing as well? Well, as well, um, one thing that we need to take into consideration is life as after prison, right? So that aspect, youths and women, and also we have quite a few persons, while they are in prison, they are involved in agriculture. Okay. So we, I think that we need to also look at training some of these inmates in agriculture and prepare them for life after prison. Definitely. Right? So when they when they come outside they that they have a means mm -hmm. of making money. Remember agriculture is also a trade. And it's one of the easiest trades to learn at the same time. <laughs> Yet we have challenges, but it is something that no matter your age, you can get involved into agriculture at the same time. So we have the focus for youths, women, and I think we could also place some f emphasis on training the prisoners mm -hmm. for life, preparing them for life after prison. And like the areas of focus, man. Yes. Some innovation, <coughs> a little bit of tweaking that we could do. Because when we look at the industry, there is a lot allocated towards projects and incentives altogether. So I'm thinking to myself, while we may not be able to actually control the figures, at the very least, the areas that can certainly strengthen the actual activities can be an area of focus. But beyond the groups, Beyond the incentives, are there any other things that you think will be changed 
perhaps in the budget as well. I'll start with Nile, just because from the Farmers Association, Farming Association perspective, you guys can actually supply figures and data mm -hmm. that they would have perhaps need to follow up on or need to change. So anything else that you could think of that we should be looking so, forward to so in that budget? Besides that, mm -hmm. right? And I believe Kwan also touched on it a little. What we would like to see in the near future again, or adding a change, is that link between our producers and agro-processors and also the support in between where we will have the transformation from a producer to becoming an agro-processor as well because the future also is within value-added products. And when you take into consideration food prices and all these things and availability of food, agro-processing is very important. And when you look at other countries and what they are doing now, most of the producers are agro-processors. So you may be a dairy farmer, but you may have your own line of dairy products. And this is something that we need to look into, how we also foster that relation. So if it is that we can see something taking place in that process, so besides your incentives and all these things, how it is that we create that agri-entrepreneur mm -hmm. is something that would add a lot of value to TNT. Beautiful. As the agro entrepreneur, <coughs> anything you want to add, Lacan? Definitely. <laughs> so I will expand on what Dairo is saying and also add um, there's the Muruga agro processing facility, but I still think that there's room for more agro processing facilities and not just a space where a person could rent, but a facility where there's industrial de dehydration machines, industrial um, ovens, so that persons could get involved in the agriculture sector, probably pay a subsidized fee to get the service done by the government. Um, and get this stuff packaged and stuff like that. Um, but what change I would like to see regarding in terms of agriculture moving forward is the focus on students and young people in secondary schools getting involved in an aggressive agriculture um, initiative, um, revitalizing school agriculture um, systems. Um, who knows, they may be the ones that will be supplying the food feeding program in the near future. And um, besides the schools and the young persons in the schools and agro-processing, I think in technology as well, um, we have a Ministry of Digital Transformation. And I would like to see like courses for young people in artificial intelligence and drone fertilization and how they can mitigate um, climate change by using technology and smart technology and climate resilience. Mm, a lot of information that everybody could use, not just the Ministry of Agriculture, but certainly giving us insight this morning as we head into budget conversations. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your information. For attending this conversation and starting the ball rolling, we'll check in with you all after Monday and see how you feel. Definitely. Yeah? <laughs> of course, Dara Rampasad, the president of the Agricultural Society, and Mr. Laquan Pear, the winner of the Agriculture Youth Award this year, giving us some insight ahead of budget talks coming up on Monday. Guys, it now continues with birthdays after these messages, so stick around. We'll be back. Yeah, man,